If you're engaged with the K-pop community across social media in any capacity, you'll probably already know that Max Snyder has recently ran through hype labels like a Tomb Raider. Max's recent visit to hype labels in Korea is a result of his collaboration with Yoon Jin from La Seraphim on the song Stupid in Love from his new album called Love in Stereo, which has caused a bit of an uproar among K-pop fans. Every time a Hybe idol gets in trouble, they send in Max with an iPhone as punishment. Legend says if you whisper Hybe in the mirror three times, Max pops up. Every time Max enters the Hybe building and makes a video, an angel loses its wings. I can't believe Boy Next Door managed to stay away from the Max Hybe takeover. That's talent right there. Zico sacrificing himself for his sons, that's Appa. Needless to say, his presence in the K-pop sphere once again after his collaborations with Yoongi in 2021 are causing a bit of an outrage, and I want to quickly walk through why it's happening and try to develop an understanding about the situation and what we can do about it. The primary, the main piece of evidence that affords Max the anger of the K-pop community is his comments in an interview about, quote, getting in on K-pop before it was popular. Um, I had a question for you because yeah. I feel like... I feel like you would, um, you're probably on this wave a little bit or yeah. kind of are getting familiar with it. How do you feel about K-pop? K-pop? Oh, man, I've been on the BTS vibe for a while. Yo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I told Ryan, because we have party peoples as well, I was right. like, yo, we need to remix a BTS song now. And then I saw that Chainsmokers got a song with them. And Steve, I was like, we should have hit that wave, Ryan. <laughs> We knew about this months ago. This is definitely the most damning piece of evidence against Max's intentions with K-pop artists like Yoonjin and Yoongi. It paints him out as an opportunist, emphasizing that he regrets not capitalizing off of the K-pop wave sooner and before everybody else. I think most K-pop fans are sensitive to and seriously fear this kind of ideology when it comes to K-pop operating in the West, and not for no reason. As we've seen, there's a genuine need to be concerned that idols won't be respected as individual performers and artists, and instead are seen as just some kind of number or simply marketing and advertising for any Western artist who works with them. Especially when that artist doesn't seem to really know anything about the groups or artists they're quote, working with, such as Max in the same interview and another interview with Genius, questioning and missing the pronunciation of the names of the artists he knows personally. When we knew that Yoonji couldn't be in the music video, yeah, I was so really, I didn't know about it till um, Jungkook did a live stream. Okay. And he, that's how you pronounce it, right? Jungkook, right? Cool. I All think right. so, BTS yeah. Fans? All right, cool. I just <laughs> want to make sure online. <laughs> Both of these things are not really a good look for Max, but I will say with the Wild 94.9 and Genius interviews, the videos circling around leave out what I think is pretty important context to what he said, so for the sake of making some sort of analysis in this whole discussion, I want to include additional context to these videos that have been circulating. So I was just, them. yeah, I was curious yeah. about your, your take on that a little bit. They deserve bit. it. They, you, like, I feel like K-pop groups are so determined and focused. Like, right. There's a, and, and in all music, there's, there, it just goes to show that you just have to, the, the talent is, it, it has to be there. It's the, all over the, the place. Work, the work ethic, though, is the thing that you find from, I think, from that culture of music that, right. like, man, I'm sure they rehearse every second of every day because everything is so locked in and perfect. You I know? feel like you do that, too, though. When we knew that Yoonji couldn't be in the music video, my wife and I learned the entire Korean rap. It took us two weeks. It was like homework. Every night, we learned one new line, and we had it in a really slow form, like super slow so we could get the pronunciation, and then a slightly faster, slightly faster, and then the actual song. And then we threw a little cat in there because I know ARMY loves to to have a little representation of uh, a little cat meow meow in there, but uh, but it was really cool to just represent his spirit in the record, even though he couldn't be there. I love that I get to look at my wife every night and we look at each other and we just start doing the rap. We're like, eh, hey, go Dim Jaru. It's just like this little moment and it's like our little love language now, which is super cute. I never would have expected it a year ago, you know? This is nothing too substantial, and depending on how you look at it, this may not help his case at all, but I think it does alleviate some of the opportunist claims. Max, at the very least, knows personal things about the artist he's working with and has seemingly a respect or appreciation for the K-pop industry. I don't bring this up to defend Max, but I think he deserves to be properly represented in this discussion if his thoughts and ideas are being used as evidence against him. So, it's these two things, the rhetoric in his interviews of the past three or so years combined Combined with his recent visit to Korea doubling as a huge social media promotion campaign for his new album. The TikToks he filmed with every K-pop group we could find doesn't feel at all comforting in the wake of the opportunist accusations. It's very easy to look at this situation and see it as Max trying to capitalize off of the loyalty that comes with K-pop fans. Now, an argument to be made against all of this is that this is the nature of the music industry at large, and certainly so in pop music. It is quite common for artists to collaborate with other unlikely artists to capture and expose each other's audiences 
to the other artist, right? This is a huge marketing tactic in music and Max would not be the first or the worst case of this scheme in the music business. I think, I think the core of this part of the problem is twofold. So despite the way that he speaks, I have no reason to believe Max isn't genuine when speaking about the friendship he has with Yoongi. I think the real problem here arises when his label and or maybe Max himself incorporates his friendship with Yoongi as a direct marketing tactic for his own music. Like he speaks so much on it in interviews that it seems like he's making an honest effort to prove it to K-pop fans in order to gain their trust. Judging by the way Max said he wanted to quote, get in on the K-pop industry and now considering his efforts to advertise his friendship with Yoongi and continue to work with other K-pop artists, it does seem like he's trying to earn the trust of K-pop fans by putting in the work with the goal of obtaining the K-pop fan loyalty in the end. From the perspective of K-pop fans, that's what this looks like. It does not feel genuine and to me, this is what inspires the hatred that K-pop fans have for him in part. There is another more terrifying part to this problem that we do need to look into. In addition to the opportunist accusations, the more concerning aspect to Max is his behavior and temperament on social media. I'm not going to make the same mistakes as I did with the Lingrins. I'm going to include the post here, so just a warning ahead that the language and rhetoric in these posts is a lot or can be a lot. As far as I was able to find, Max has only addressed or clarified the post about his fans in Brazil, saying that he posted it with no bad intentions and it was a mutual understanding among his fans as he calls them monkeys. Yeah, his social media behavior is not great to say the least. I think he, like many other people in the earlier days of social media, used it as a way to express any idea that came to his head without really thinking about it. At least I hope that's what all of this means. The unfortunate part about this is that it will always be there and unless it's addressed or condemned, there's not much that can be pulled from these posts other than the ignorance or hatred to them. His internet history reads as incredibly hateful at worst and incredibly tone deaf and ignorant at best. Considering Max has worked in the entertainment industry since he was 14 years old with work on both Nickelodeon and Disney, I'm not defending him in any way by bringing this up or excusing his behavior, but if I had to look for some sort of reason as to why or how he could post things like this, I would point to the fact that he is a child star. Again, that does not excuse anything he said or done, but I think that's where this ignorance could be coming from. An industry where you aren't necessarily confronted with or tasked to deal with social issues. So, his social media behavior with a specific focus to the discriminatory rhetoric about East Asians in mind, in combination with his track record of coming off as an opportunist when it comes to K-pop, this is the scope of why he is so widely hated in the community. What can or should we do about this? In the end, it's hard to draw a conclusion about the opportunist aspect of this situation. We don't know his intentions, despite how many clues or evidence we receive, and the reason why I say this is because Max does have a personal relationship with Yoongi and now Yoonjin that they all all seem to value mutually in some ways. The way that Max kind of centers K-pop in the promotion of his work when he's able to is definitely odd and uncomfortable at times and reads certainly as him trying to objectify artists like Yoongi and Yoonjin as some sort of marketing tool in order to appease K-pop fans to sort of win them over in some ways. This is the problem that I think we should be looking at. I'm not trying to diminish or excuse his poor behavior online. That's something he deserves to be reprimanded for separately, but the core of the problem for us as K-pop fans seems to be the opportunity aspect of this problem. This is the recurring problem that exists way beyond just Max as an artist or as an individual, right? So, is Max an opportunist? It certainly seems like it at times, but we don't know for sure. What we do know are the things that we can see, such as the tendency to objectify Yoongi in promotion for his work. From my perspective, and judging by Max's words in full context, I think this problem is Max's personal life and life as an artist blending together in quite an ugly way. The touting of K-pop idol features feels like objectification, and I don't want to believe Max intends it to be that way, as he does claim to see value in the relationships he has with artists like Yoongi and Yoonjin, but the business side of the music industry kind of requires him to do so, to objectify them in some ways which has earned him the hatred of K-pop fans, and rightfully so. We don't know how much of this promotion is on behalf of his own decision or if this is being pushed by his label primarily. What we do know is that Max blends his artistic and personal life together quite often. He has a project centered around getting married to his wife, and the music video is footage from the wedding. He is clearly an artist that wants to represent 
represent his life in his music, and that's great and fine, but he is also profiting off of it as a commercial artist. The business side of the music industry also has to come with him as he tries to represent his personal life, and this is where I think the problem actually begins. I want to, and for the time being, do believe Max has genuine friendships with these idols, it just gets muddy once the business side of the industry comes in, and the friendships he has with other artists becomes a marketing tactic for his own work. In any case, this behavior is inexcusable, and certainly does not come across as mutual respect between artists or friends by the end. It seems like Max just wants the security for song and or album streams that come with K-pop's loyal and dedicated fan base, and over time, he has recognized that he has to earn the respect of K-pop fans in order to obtain that. That's fully what it seems like in a lot of ways, to which I fault him and his management for causing. Even if he is genuine with his intentions, the end product results in K-pop artists looking like objects in the eyes of the audience Max is introducing them to. For us as K-pop fans, what I think can be done about this is to just not stream the songs, if it really does feel like any given Western artist isn't showing respect to the artist they're working with. I know a lot of this is just the nature of pop music, it can be very vain and the business aspects of the industry kind of bleed through in very ugly ways, but we as fans should be allowed to advocate for the respect of idols as the artists they are, as the individuals they are. We should be allowed to condemn the odd promotion of K-pop collaborations as something overly vain, or something that makes the idol out to be less than an artist and more like another number in the grand scheme of the music business. If this is the way that things will continue as K-pop collaborations become even more common in the West, I think we could benefit from seriously calling out Western artists, and importantly, their record labels and PR teams, demanding that they show more consideration and respect to the artists they collaborate with. At the very, very dead least, knowing the names of the members of the groups they work with. We need to advocate for respect more than anything. Those are some things that I think we can do, and what I think we shouldn't do is criticize the appearance of people like Max just because we get a bad feeling about his intentions. A lot of K-pop fans have resorted to this in the comments of the TikToks he posts with different groups, and this will obviously have no positive impact. It will mean no meaningful change to the situation we find ourselves in. If we want our favorite groups to be respected more, it's better to take the high road as we as the fans represent them in a lot of ways. Calling an artist we don't like ugly is not going to accomplish anything. Obviously. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I think. Max has a lot of damning evidence against him, but without all the information available to us, specifically the full nature of his personal relationships to the artists he works with, I think it's better to advocate to record labels and artists with the information that we do know for certain. It's fine to dislike Max over his controversial behavior on social media and in real life, absolutely. We don't know if Max has changed his mind or ways or tried to make up for his behavior online in the past, which is more than enough reason to not appreciate him as an individual. That's a complex part to this whole situation and why I want to emphasize that I'm not calling for anybody to respect him. I certainly don't on account of his behavior, but I bring this whole discussion up because opportunistic Western artists are certainly around and about and will most likely become more and more prevalent in the years to come. I think it's important to separate out this from who Max is as an individual. I debated whether or not to include his social media past on this video, but I knew if I brought this topic up and didn't mention it, people were going to mention it anyways. As an is obviously an important component to the problems fans have with Max in general. So there's that, and then also the opportunist accusations. I think there's a lot of value or benefit to us evaluating both in isolation. I think we'll need to be able to learn to identify opportunistic people and develop an understanding of how we can advocate for respect when it comes to K-pop. And that is what I think. 13 minutes later. I really thought this was just going to be like a quick six minute video, but there's a lot to this. And that being said, this is my understanding of the situation. I know there's a lot more to it. Max has more of an involved history with K-pop and BTS than what I've mentioned in this video. So if you have anything you want to add to this discussion, if you see it in a different way, please definitely let me know. I don't bring this up or try to create discussions because I think I have all the answers. Certainly not. Thank you for watching this. If you did, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time.